la pola no se ha La pola no se ha pasado. La pola no se ha pasado.
can be attributed to this huge economic and political policies adopted by those countries. Uh, a third observation that we can show of the uh, production process. Uh, so the volatility of the liberalization of the capital has enabled them to just the condition probably that the global market provides for the labor so there is a song this association the uh, areas of creating of added value and the uh, areas where uh, these are so we have an accumulation of capital among the rich and the poverty among the poor people as well so has become in the hand of a state held new stakeholders who are the multinationals. Uh, they've got the power who define the uh, processes, uh, distribution processes, the distribution of the wealth between the countries and the territories, but also between the population. The state that do this the distribution of the income, but it is the multinational that do so. Uh, so in this uh, quest of but at a national, uh, we uh, went into uh, some, to some companies and tax exemptions in uh, order to attract uh, more and more capitals in their countries. Uh, so uh, in the past, we used to uh, protect the workers and uh, we used to uh, tax the capital. The remuneration of the labor work uh, uh, compared to the global level, there is a, a labor uh, global uh, working class uh, that has uh, uh, no longer benefiting from social services increase in the uh, developing countries that only provide the salaries, the cost of the labor, and the and the productivity structure on the production system uh, to uh, make any other concession at social level. This although also as that a lot of writers have noted that those attractive policy only benefit for benefit the multinationals do not benefit the host country. So the, even the quality of those investment in the developing countries is by the multinational and which are and uh, they, they are generally done in uh, resources in uh, sectors that resources and which are transformed. So uh, they export natural resources, uh, which makes some writers say that uh, we now maintain the developing countries into an era of pre-industrialization. A fourth end of Observation, commercial trade liberalization. I will skim it uh, because it has been raised by my colleague a while ago. Uh, so, uh, what we 
now is that the developed countries are encouraging the developing countries to liberalize their commodities. You know that the historical, uh, uh, economic history of these countries has shown that they have always had their development process environment policy of their national industries, even though it was since the uh, birth of the advent who used to uh, promote the idea, uh, who used to promote the idea of this kind of global trade. Uh, so this liberalization uh, is uh, uh, on the developing countries, uh, in addition to the fact that uh, we have discussed this morning the uh, negotiation. In the neg negotiation, we don't have the capacity in the negotiation because are done between developed countries uh, and the developing countries uh, do not have neither the experience to influence uh, those negotiations. Uh, and uh, this uh, also uh, this also an focus on products that are of interest to the developed countries. We have always excluded the of interest to the developing countries and the agricultural products. Those exchanges, for example, there are, if there are exchanges between the developed countries and developing countries, there is always what we call intersector. Is, uh, uh, you export products, raw products, in order to import the manufacture on what you might call uh, the uh, intra-sector products. Uh, the similar, same production factors and which are interchangeable and which can trigger There are not many examples. Have two minutes, so I will try uh, to say that there are not too many examples uh, where there is a triggering of industrial investment. Uh, China, we know China in which China that we know the role of the public uh, of the government. The government wants to re requires. For. Now let me come to Morocco. The uh, uh, modest uh, result for made since the independence at the level of the uh, uh, industrial uh, uh, has mainly these are industries that are quite weak in technology and then we can also beginning of the we have started on other trends we used to have uh, uh, some what you used to call the new in Morocco industries that benefited uh, from uh, that uh, pol industrial policy were uh, industries in the uh, car construction, uh, aeronautics, and so on. Uh, I will more industry uh, that benefited from this support. It is the car manufacturing. We have in Morocco and with a lot of encouragement from the government car manufacturers such as Renault with the possibility of producing 400,000 as per year uh, manufacturing the capacity of 100,000. We also have a Chinese a constructed BYD for the electric cars objectively able to have 1 million of vehicles per year and to attract uh, other um, and despite this uh, evolution the uh, development of new industries in Morocco has enabled and to open up to more technological products. Uh, however, those performances in terms of exports uh, uh, did not have consequences on the industrial fabric in uh, Morocco. Industrial environment, the result is that uh, the result is in in fact, the uh, development of the new trades in Morocco has had two different results in export. With, uh, uh, and we have a positive impact in, uh, and also in terms of empl employment, but at industrial level, the results are still.
enable Morocco to go toward uh, to, to be competitive and to go to global level in terms of ex but uh, I want so just to uh, explain why we uh, did not have any impact of the industrial tissue uh, because the issue of importation is uh, important uh, with regard to the foreign uh, these uh, industries are working in a closer cycle of imports and and uh, ex manufactured product. Uh, so, the di diagram that we may have with regard to the industrial organization, uh, Machiadoras from Mexico, based on, uh, assembly activities without any relation with the local industrial tissue, without integrating the local in industries who are it because they cannot of the uh, manufacturers uh, with the uh, innovative technology in terms of quality. Uh, the increase of the sector, uh, we have also uh, the improvement of the and uh, to uh, have a real development process. Uh, it is not the uh, it, uh, that the uh, direct uh, for uh, uh, the FDI really provide uh, uh, that would provide this development to be and we need or. Uh, uh, in that purpose, we need to prepare the industrial development before going up. Uh, I would like to invite the next speaker, Como, que va no presente. I'm speaking French. Merci. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, since we are time constrained, I will go straight to the point. And uh, globalization, uh, those who are fighting against globalization will go to uh, Iglitch, which is the American economy. Was a yeah, banker. He is somebody uh, who knows the system very well and who is in the best position to create. And that's why being a philosopher and not an economist, I wanted to reflect and share with you his uh, ideas on the globalization. Uh, we can deal with globalization under various angles, uh, but what is sure is that to better understand globalization, we can also go from the differences that exist that is ongoing between uh, what's going on in the UK, uh, between the London schools of economics uh, represented by Eleanor Robbins uh, and uh, later on by IEC and the University of Cambridge, uh, who is represented by the London School of Economics uh, is against the intervention of the state into the economy, whereas John Menard King was in favor of the adequate intervention of the state uh, in the economy. As the great thing that to better understand globalization, we need to understand this is the trend which is against the intervention of the state. And this is this trend uh, that is globalized now and which is called um, the extremist trend of uh, economic liberalism. This trend was also a promoted by the Washington with the representative of the former American President Ronald Reagan and uh, the uh, Prime Minister of Britain, Sharon Lady. Yeah. This is the trend. Uh, this uh, essentially neoliberal, which is the origin of the negative uh, consequences of globalization. Uh, we can erase the very quickly, we can mention very quickly uh, the f in terms of trade is unfair and is characterized by high custom duties applied to the South in the South, uh, high tariffs on the industrial uh, product come to the South. Uh, we also have the dumping agricultural subsidies, hypocrisy, which is translated by the imposition, the tax on the uh, uh, relevant policies, by the 
Yes. The asymmetry of the economic change, yeah, the uh, blackmailing, uh, the anti-democratic operation of the Institutions, uh, the uh, uh, looting of the international of the international knowledge and it's against globalization rules uh, it has put in place are unfair because it is only at the advantage of developed countries. Focuses on materialism instead of other value. It deprives countries of their sovereignty. Uh, it also fight against the democratization. Uh, so we're going to explain what these words mean. Uh, these custom duties uh, are imposed on the product coming from the South times higher than the developing countries are imposing or applying to themselves. Uh, when these uh, taxes relate to the manufactured product, they vary between 24 and 65 percent, which shows uh, the will of the to prove the South. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, the aspect of the protect of the property intellectual property rights. Uh, uh, for example, the uh, uh, patent licensing limit access to technology. Uh, uh, the system of patent is uh, in, uh, that are uh, fed by uh, uh, previous knowledge. Uh, uh, the, uh, at the end, uh, the uh, uh, invention of the, the patient. So uh, those who are innovating uh, the fundamental research result. So this right in uh, make the uh, uh, those who have created the second. The reserve system at global level, for example, is uh, something that is uh, an advantage for the USA, who are using economy, uh, which makes the American society uh, a society of consumption based on borrowing. So uh, that the law shows that uh, it fluctuates uh, based on the fluctuations of the exchange rate countries of the south that who, that have to pay the price uh, and these countries have also to uh, uh conflicted by the uh, world bank uh, who is never responsible when these policies fail and uh, the uh, uh, create a lot of uh, damage at social level and uh, the countries in the the south is how of any system of social protection. We also have the subsidies to agricultural products. Uh, the rich countries in the uh, developing countries not to use the subsidies to the agriculture. And we know that the developed countries starting by the USA, they are supporting their farmers and their companies, as a case in point, the massive subsidies given to the cotton growers and uh, the Example, the most recent example is the American intervention during the subprime crisis. It posted uh, a quarter this intervention represent the greatest transfer of the wealth is in favor of the private sector. Uh, the hypocrisy of the developer countries uh, because this is going on in a country which uh, uh, state intervention is uh, taking place in the country which is against socialism and that's why we cannot in socialism the uh, public assistance to development which is also uh, based on condition we got the interest of the uh, countries of the north and Stiglish was asking if this is meaningful because we are preventing uh, uh, developing countries to have access to countries in the north, and then we come back to bring in some kind of kind of uh, uh, bad Paul disguising himself into humanitarian people. So you see, uh, knowing that everything starts with the issue of WTO, the WTO agenda, uh, which is set up by the G7. Uh, and uh, everything is uh, uh, under controlled, uh, controlled by developed countries. Exchange between the South countries, which are very poor, 
So as a conclusion for the glitch uh, globalization to dismantle their custom barriers while preserving theirs and preventing the developing countries their products. From there, we can say that Siglis can say that we need to have another globalization. He thinks is if it is well reflected and if we get rid of the Washington consensus, we can lead can lead to another globalization which shared happiness share for all. And he takes the example of the Eastern Asian countries. These countries have shown that inequality is not growth. So in those countries, we did not have any primitive accumulation of wealth. It is uh, interesting to read uh, what uh, Stiglitz is saying about this issue of these eyes. He says that these Asian countries uh, have uh, uh, developed uh, open to globalization to export and not by opening themselves uh, to dismantling their uh, economic barriers uh, uh, through exports. Uh, and uh, the uh, state has intervened massively in structures, in education but also sometimes in the economic area, for example, uh, by uh, saving in rural areas and by other means. Uh, so uh, uh, for another globalization is possible for SLIG. For that, we need to get the market who makes people think that the market in itself can create uh, the wealth also uh, fight against inequalities. It is not possible. So we need to have measured intervention by the governments uh, and beyond what Estaglish is proposing, I say also that we need to promote or we might call uh, the uh, isophobia or the fear of inequality. Uh, uh, so uh, which means that for these countries uh, we, for these countries, uh, uh, a shared world of happiness is impossible, but they need to uh, try to uh, uh, a possible a prosperity which is shared, a world of happiness where happiness is shared. And I think that at this level, I think that China, it was said this morning, is proposing a new development paradigm uh, in which we would have to think about because in this paradigm, it seems. Uh, uh, is, uh, is not uh, founded based on exploitation. So we can have another form of international collaboration uh, that will be profitable to all. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, this afternoon we had uh, four papers presented by colleagues from and Senegal, whom I would like to thank for the important points raised. The questions raised are from case studies on uh, theoretical questions. Added with the debates we, we had yesterday, keynote and of President. Uh, um, Becky, um, where it is clear uh, uh, and it is the, by um, common in all papers the discontent of the globalization and of alternatives for, for Africa that are concerns of the speakers and uh, and, uh, and uh, today also. Uh, the papers presented the uh, problems related with the states and um, the power of the agents of the expansion of capitalism. So let's go to the questions because we have problems with time. Let's start by that side and after that. Thank you. My name is Leon Kolo. I'm from uh, Cameroon. My question uh, goes to all, all the speakers. 
Hopefully, uh, Professor Jomo uh, is gone. Maybe it's been a, a good uh, resource to, to respond to, to this uh, question. Um, uh, the time, the time we are, we are living in seems to be a time of prediction because the, the discourse of uh, free trade actually presently is promoted by uh, or is, is champions in China, a communist, communist country. Uh, uh, the discourse against free trade in the United States. So how can we explain uh, this contradiction uh, 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 today? Uh, uh, at the emergence of a, a post-neoliberal uh, order, uh, if how, uh, what are the, the, the main characteristics of, of this post-neoliberal uh, China? Maybe some uh, elements can uh, borrow, borrow, can help us. So what is the current situation of, of the world? Crisis of globalization, crisis of neoliberal, or we are entering a, a post neoliberal order. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, uh, from Uganda. Um, we are talking about free trade. Um, and we are talking about opening markets elsewhere where African countries can be able to um, freely trade. Uh, how much do we trade with each other on the continent? How free uh, the continent exchange goods and services across the borders? We have limitations um, as African regard to um, crossing the border and being able to exchange labor, uh, goods and services would exploit the existing opportunities on the continent but we are asking for trade elsewhere are we being true to ourselves we, as African countries what are we trading what do we have to offer in the international market how much are we taking there? How much is our travel? And what kind of goods and taking on international? Uh, thank you very much, Shepesen. Uh, I, I want to comment to all this. These are very interesting, uh, very pertinent ideas. I just have a few questions. Um, I read a lot and, uh, on industrialization, on both the market-led development and development. And I'm kind of puzzled because, first of all, I think maybe let me comment on the first uh, speaker where your point was, well, neoliberal, neoliberal, neoliberalism, which is market-oriented, is a detriment, and that's why you advocate developmental state. Um, how do you reconcile that with the fact that for growth, you need growth? Because with low economic growth, there is very limited development you can achieve. In Infrastructure, you need to allocate resources from your budget from other, you know, domestic uh, resource mobilization. And that can only happen. But also, uh, in terms of, you were critical, of it. I'm also critical, but I want your reaction. The African Union, as you know, uh, with, with, there is this uh, initiative, the African Continental Trade. That's free trade. It's actually a trade removal of tariffs. Is that is that to yield the same results that we're talking about at global level? 
So is free trade at the global level, but accepting and embracing it within the continent. You need to address that issue. The missed your names, uh, the gentleman from Morocco, very interesting. I've read a ro lot about the Moro Moroccan chiefs focusing particularly on the 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 the, 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 the car price that you are saying the impact has been very limited but it's good to hear it from you but my question is volume that perhaps the volume uh what are the alternatives in terms of in, in we also have is uh, with the globalization as it currently is. But given the hills, and we know the countries that are very with go into mineral value, agro processing, granted. Some levels of agricultural processing, mineral energy. most of it we will need to have uh, technology. Are we going to, if we totally, uh, if we completely agree that we are going to dealing because in the global level, mind, these are some of the challenges that we really have to address if we are the current you know, the, the, the global ironic is those higher to go into such a transformation industrialization in Africa and put our you can address and finally the question that I have is what is your comment on uh, the South African few that's relatively more industrialized in Africa, although I mean it is still a lower in country in countries, but uh, uh, where this manufactured products uh, as a ratio of GDP of that is now quite integrated into the global uh, economic system. That's precisely they were vulnerable because of this integration. And yet, at the same time, this this is the fact yeah. them to achieve the level of the industrialization where they are. In really, I I am very critical, and I've written. I'm very critical. I'm very for global so present. Uh, but at the same time, my, if, we, if you look at the state, technology skills that you need for mineral processing manufacturing, so that is implemented. We are very low on that. Now, And so, for me, it's more about how big that it is possible win win conditions trans the path. Global tilted against it, it seems to be because of technology need and we critically engage on this thing. Uh, my song um, from Kenya. My view, there are three trajectories of globalization. There is the economic trajectory, the cultural trajectory. Right. So far, discussions from yesterday. 
first objective of globalization. They have ably demonstrated their negative. But if we just oppose the economic globalization in the pro good privatization for human rights, for gender empowerment, if was the economic trajectory and the political trajectory correct to argue that whereas the economic trajectory has been more positive than negative then Merci, madame. Je suis le directeur pour la association de l'économie. Il faut vraiment commencer à commencer liberalization uh, policy was the of the American uh, president Secretary of State after the war to put in place the Michael plan and no and the United States they rich and if they are and because of the free trade with the European uh, continent. So that was the condition. So they with condition mine, we almost never talk about. It. Uh, and uh, that was the extension of uh, free trade to the other colonies. Wanted to liberalize the colonies, like to uh, stop colonization and also to integrate and the formula that was found was inductiveness and after we had all those struck Washington consensus and at that time the African countries like uh, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon and they were at the slot was uh, core and the drug that was at the same level of those of those countries you know how can we qualified uh, liberal 